So we're going to talk about um, novel approaches to uh, uh, telemetry and why um, AI uh, training jobs specifically um, make it important to look at it in a slightly different way. Uh, so I'm uh, Roop. Uh, this is joint work with my very smart colleagues at NVIDIA Networking, specifically Elon Gao and uh, Omer Shabtai. So uh, this is a short talk, so <laughs> I'm not going to poll you, but I'm pretty sure. OK. Is that better? OK. So, um, so I won't poll you, but essentially I'm pretty sure all of us, uh, all of you are running training in some form or another and watching your tensor boards, kind of like that there. Um, and let's say this is pretty typical training. Um, that we run in our cluster. So let's say we have 128 edge axes. Um, and uh, it's a long training job, but we see around 1.75 seconds is where, um, where it stabilizes. So each iteration is around 1.75. We're happy, let's say we're looking for 750K iterations. So that should be 15 days of training. Um, but after five days, when you're not paying attention, or maybe you are, but I'm not, and that it just creeps up a bit, right? It's it's eight percent more, 1.9 seconds. You just lost a whole day of training. Someone's gonna wake up and say, "Hey, what happened? Why wh why did I lose a day of training?" So this is the problem we're all facing. So unfortunately, for AI training, it could be just one nick out of the 1K that I just mentioned before. And 1K is, is peanuts now, so, but just one nick out of 1K. So AI training, the whole training performance proceeds at the speed of its slowest link, the weakest link. So what does that mean? So as Jeff said a minute ago, we have 100K GPUs, several of these running now, running today, I know. Um, they are connected by 2.5K switches, rail optimized. That's half a million ports, right? So any one of these slightly lagging the others, you lose a day. So this is the challenge for telemetry. Find the proverbial needle in a very large haystack. The good news is AI traffic is very regular, right? You can see that from that inside trace from a GPU, where when things are working well, we should see TX and RX happening at line rate and nothing, right? So this is, this is the clue that we need. It's not just the data rate that repeats like clockwork. There is a great deal of symmetry everywhere. Even when things are not going so well, like congestion, there is a great deal of symmetry in congestion. Um, you'll find uh, pauses that are symmetrical. You'll find uh, packet drops that are symmetrical. So there is, a lot of con there is a lot of symmetry that helps us debug these things. So the bad news, though, is most of our telemetry is designed for um, systems that have a great deal of uh, diversity, have fat tails, uh, and they don't, they don't look for stuff like this. So our claim is that the key to debugging AI training is to look for similarity and synchronicity as opposed to long tails. So could we have saved the day? So indeed, in our motivating example, we could have saved the day. So we could have noticed, and we, we did <laughs> notice, uh, performance, intermittent performance uh, drops at the, at, the, at the throughput level. And if you, indeed, it shows up at the, the, the second chart there, as one of the boxes has much higher, um, has much higher uh, retransmissions than other boxes. And then if you double click on that, you see one of the links has high bid errors and automatically disable that. 
stable performance returns. And as you saw with Jeff's slides just before, things don't degrade terribly if you can, if you can mitigate these early. So we could have certainly got the day back. So, so here's the keys. If you, if you line up the hay properly, the needle stands out. So it's, a, it's all a matter of, uh, of looking at it the right perspective, and it's not terribly hard. The, the, the number of uh, paths, the number of uh, ports that may fail, yes, they may fail, but when they work well, they work really well, so, so it's easy to spot them. So for example, when AR is doing its job, and it does its job most of the time, uh, it's balancing load well, we really do see P0 is the same as P50, is the same as P99. We actually have, we actually have plots exactly like this, and this is from, from our clusters, and, and, and we have alerts that go out when they're not. So there is, um, this symmetry allows aggregation, right? I think we saw a few plots before with thousands of lines. I can't, I can't tell what's going on there. So what do we do? We aggregate. And, and we know we can aggregate. And we have alerts that tell us, don't aggregate here. This stuff's not good. Don't look at the, look, look at the big plots. So, so instead of the picture on the left, um, instead of uh, plotting each queue, is that the Q one? Yeah, each queue from a leaf switch, um, we use symmetry and uh, we combine, we just have one bar representing the whole, uh, we call it the SU. Um, and then for each bar, we know that the traffic is periodic. So we compress in the time dimension and make it into a histogram. Finally, we color these histograms like heat maps. Some folks call it heat maps, but essentially it's a grading of the color, same color. And then we lay them out uh, buckets side by side. So each SU's bucket zero is, is next to each other and so forth. So visually, this is very helpful. The horizontal bands of buckets emerge, and that's where we see the symmetry working. And when they don't, we know there's a problem. We know where to go look. And it's not hard to put these into, um, it's not hard to put these into other mechanisms that will automatically go and look for further problems. There's also symmetry in jobs. We are all hopefully running many jobs and utilizing our uh, GPU cluster as well. Um, so, um, so there's also asymmetry across jobs. So for example, we filter for jobs, uh, for hosts that are part of the same job to remove differences um, in job-specific traffic. So we don't want to see differences in jobs break our aggregations, because remember, the aggregations are, are kind of key to what we're doing here. So we make sure we separate them, um, and, and we don't see uh, false, uh, false problems there. Um, furthermore, you could look at the job labels uh, and see when they coincide in time, where they coincide um, across uh, your scalable units and where they may interfere with each other. So here are some other examples. The figure in the top left is, uh, is GPU TX and the one on the right is GPU RX. Um, and here you see the very typical, we talk about bimodal traffic always on or zero and we see a good example of that. Um, and, the, and you can see a candle in the middle there, the one circled in red. The one sort of not circled is just off, it's, it's not working. But the one in the, in, in, the circled in red shows you a, a candle. And what that says is that that particular HEX box was unable to transmit at peak. It had to use a whole range of rates that are lower than peak. And that's, that's no good. And it's corroborated by the receiver side where that receiver, the next HEX box, received at a whole range of rates. Um, and we know there, in this case, we know this was a nickel ring, so they match up. And we have, uh, we have a needle that's standing out right there. Similar aggregations and similar bands work with, uh, so the one on the left is uh, Q histograms. And you can see in a good situation, you're pretty much at the bottom. There's a band at the bottom. You're happy with that. There is 
a slight bit at the top, but there is one guy that's standing out as a candle right there. You're saying, wait, I, I, see, I see a problem there. Similarly, you could do this for congestion notifications, and then I guess the last one is, is timeouts and so forth. So, so it works at many different levels. So I'd, I'd encourage everyone to keep looking at, at, at these symmetries and, and how they can uh, debug our very large uh, uh, clusters. So yeah, that's, that's the appeal. Um, we use these every day. We know they help us a lot. Hopefully they'll help you a lot. Um, this is also making its way into our Spectrum X stack and it's running now in a, in a couple of large clusters uh, at our customer sites, very large clusters. Uh, and we've seen them at, we're happy to see them work at much larger clusters than we have tested them internally. So uh, that's, that's all that, that I have. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be around and I can even answer them now if, if we have time. Thank you.